Hi, so my name is Awal Fusina. I'm a researcher at the University of Bristol Vet School looking at the slaughter of animals. The essence of this short video, however, is to look at uh, the content or to introduce, briefly introduce the content of a paper we published recently in Cub Reviews Journal entitled Electrical Water Bath Standing for Halal Poultry Meat Production, Animal Welfare Issues and Compatibility with the Halal Rules. So what it simply means is that we looked at the welfare aspects of water bath standing, whether it compromises the welfare of the animal and whether the process is compatible with halal, with the rules of halal slaughter. So, uh, I've got a chicken here. It's not live chicken, it's plastic. And I've got a shackle here. So what I'm going to explain is, in most industrialized world, the way chicken are slaughtered is that they are placed into this thing called a shackle by putting their feet, these spaces here, to, so that the chicken are then conveyed into a water bath. So you immerse the head and the whole body into the, into the bath, but the essence is that when you put the head into the bath, it is immediately stunned. So when it's stunned, it disrupts brain function and the animal will be knocked unconscious. But is it what really happens? That's what we looked at. So the first thing we looked at was that is the process stressful? So this is a review paper. So we looked at different papers and we found that when you shackle animal, because the shackling process is not the natural position of the bird, it is stressful because the level of cortisol, many researchers have, uh, have measured the level of uh, cortisol prior to shackling and after shackling. And they've realized that the amount of cortisol in the blood actually increases after shackling. So that is some evidence to suggest that the process is stressful to birds. The other thing we looked at is because you shackle the birds and birds do not have a diaphragm, all the viscera moves to the thoracic cavity here. And when that happens, there is, it presents the animals with breathing problem. The, 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 birds is, the bird is not able to breathe properly. And that can lead, if, if, if it's held there for a longer time, that can actually lead to the death of the animal, of the bird. So, it is a concern from a halal perspective because uh, Muslims are enjoined not to eat animals that are dead before the neck is cut. So if you shackle animals for a long time and there is a possibility of the animals dying as a result of the lack of breathing door or the, 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 the effect on normal breathing, that should be a concern from halal perspective. The other thing we looked at is, does, the, does placing the legs of animals in a shackle cause any breakages in bones? We look at several papers, and one of the papers we looked at was that published by Gregory and Wilkins. And we found, they, they reported that 44% of birds were found to have freshly broken bones between the time they were shackled and the neck cap. So as a result of the shackling, about 44% of spent hens uh, were found to have broken bone. That is a huge number. If you consider the fact that millions of birds are slaughtered this way, then 44% of even a million is a, is, a, is a significant number of broken bones. So that affects the welfare of the animal. We've just looked at the, the, the shackling of the bird. So And shackling is common during slaughter with stunning and slaughter without stunning from halal perspective. So that is a concern for any Muslim because there are broken bones, which shows the animals, the welfare is compromised. The welfare is, is negatively affected. There is also the lack of diaphragm, which presents breathing problems to the animals. That is not good for welfare. And from a halal perspective, if animals die as a consequence of the shackling because of the lack of diaphragm, that is also a concern from halal perspective because Muslims are not permitted to eat, to eat dead. Before the bird even gets into the water, at the entry of the water bath, if the entry is wet and there is uh, electricity, escape of electricity into the, to the, to the entry of the water bath, that entry will be electrified and the birds will receive some shock before they even get into the water. So that is a welfare concern because 
the priest and short will not stun the animal, but will only uh, apply a, a painful shock to the animal. So that is a concern from a welfare perspective and maybe from a halal perspective as well. The other thing apart from pre, uh, pre stance shots is the question of whether the animals are actually effectively stunned during water bath stunning. Well, there is sufficient evidence to suggest that water bath stunning is a humane process if done pro uh, properly. But what we, we, we looked at in our paper is that different birds have got different resistances. And if a, a bird has got large, high resistance, it's likely to receive lower current. And if it receives lower current, it's likely not to be effectively stunned. So you are only shocking the animal, which is painful. It's not stunning it. It's not stunning it because the resistance of the bird is so high that it cannot receive sufficient current to stun it. The other thing is birds with low resistance will receive higher current, higher amount of current, and that can affect that can actually result in the death of the birds because if you look at the water bath, the current is actually passed from the head to the feet. So it goes through the whole body and because it goes through the whole body, the, the heart can be affected. If the heart, the normal function of the heart is affected as a result of the passage of current, that can also result in the death of the animal.